the internet possibly the society's most widely available resource ever the internet is used for a multitude of things the internet can be used for anything from attending a meeting to simply just chatting with your friend over an IM service the internet can be used to connect with your friends via social networking with like Twitter, MySpace, and Facebook. The internet can be used to watch a video on YouTube. It can be used to watch a TV show you might have missed with Hulu. Or perhaps you can use it to rent a movie without even having to leave your house with Netflix. The internet is a very useful tool. And we all use it every day. In fact, I would not be surprised if you can find a list of most used programs on your computer and you will probably find if you check that list that your web browser of choice will be in the top five most used programs on your computer what would you think though if one day when you decided to wake up which hopefully you do decide to wake up and you go to your computer screen and you turn your computer on and you discover something very interesting that your computer can now only browse the internet and that is quite about it. What would you think? Would you deem the computer useless, piece of crap, piece of garbage? Or would you actually still use the thing? Well, believe it or not, today I actually am going to be reviewing an operating system that is literally just dedicated to browsing the web and that's it. So, let's go ahead and get into this review of Google's Chrome OS. Let's get into it. Alright, so, something I would like to point out to you is that I'm going to stay away from really talking too much about the hardware uh, as much as I'm going to talk about the software because this is not a review about the laptop itself. Um, this is a review of the Chrome OS because well, you know, that's what I'm going to be reviewing, obviously. However, I will still show you what the computer looks like, so just so that way you can get a feel of what these Chrome OS laptops will look like when they are available to the public, because they actually are not yet uh, available to the general public. Uh, so anyway, let's go ahead and take a look around this computer here. Uh, you'll see here on the front that we'll have this very MacBook-esque latch here that is used for opening the computer easily. Um on the side, the right side to be precise, you have uh, a speaker. And right here you have a useless, but it is still there and probably will eventually be implicated into the OS, but you have an SD uh, card reader. Uh, I don't know if this is SDHC or SDXD or any of that stuff, or XD, SD, ick, ick, anyway. Um, it's not useful yet, but it is there, and I do find it is a little hard to push, but that's just, that's that. Um, we do need to get a little deep in there, whoops, to, um, get it to uh, to come out but you know again it's we're not really concerned about the hardware too much so you know that was just a little dummy card in there so let's pop that back in right here is where you plug in your headphones and possibly even a microphone um, this is a USB port which is currently only useful for mice and keyboards so that's a bit of a bummer but it's there so that's good um, and this is your power jack so you can plug it into the uh, power outlet on this, uh, on the back, you have a hinge that's very similar to the MacBook. This is very reminiscent, by the way, to a black MacBook. Uh, just something to take a note of there. This right here is your VGA port, so you can plug it into the monitor and uh, view it on a bigger screen. This is your intake valve, or excuse, your intake air vent, and this is your left speaker. And on the bottom, you have some very uh, interesting thing. Right here is where the air comes out, so your output vent. And this is by far the coolest battery I have ever seen on any laptop ever. If you slide the switch here, the battery lifts up, you can pop it out with your fingers, and you'll notice, first of all, that it is quite large. And B, when you turn it like this, you'll find that it is very, very, very thin. I mean, look at that, that's crazy, man, wow. Uh, and we're just gonna go ahead and pop that back in. Oh, and for you Nintendo fans, you're going to be happy because it says Mario right there, so um, not like, you know, Super Mario, but presumably um, that's either the company who makes the battery or that could be the company that also makes the laptop because we're, I'm not really sure who makes the laptop because there is no branding on here whatsoever. And there is a reason for that. That is because this is simply a test unit, which is why we're not really reviewing the laptop. Although it would be interesting to find out who makes it. Maybe if I actually could see 
um, what came inside the box. Maybe there'd be a clue in there. Um, I should mention, this is not my laptop, which is why you did not see an unboxing video. Um, I'm actually borrowing this, so that's just something to take note of there. Alright, so let's go ahead and open this thing up. And you'll notice by this little light there that the computer automatically turns on when you open it. Which is actually very simple, but actually very cool. I've honestly never seen any other computer do that. Alright, and what we're actually going to do uh, when it's done booting up, we're actually going to plug this uh, the mouse in uh, to the side here because the uh, touchpad on this thing is very finicky and that might interfere with the review, so I'd like to use a mouse. Uh, so we're actually going to be logging into the guest account, but you can see right here there's my account. You log in, by the way, uh, with your Google account, obviously, because it's Google's OS. So when you open up the, uh, the guest account, you will be brought to uh, the incognito mode, which... Um, you know, if you have ever used Google Chrome, you'll know that this is the mode you'll want to go into when you want to check your banking statements or if you need to do something that's pretty highly confidential on a public network. You'd want to use incognito. Um, so that way it's nice and hidden, but, you know. Alright, so for those of you who actually use Google Chrome as your default browser, this is nothing new to you. This is basically <laughs> Google Chrome. And that's it. All this is is Google Chrome. So, if you've used Google Chrome as your default browser, you already know everything about this operating system. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, see how well it actually browses the web. Obviously, we're going to start by going to my blog. So, let's see, p a z z a c n blog dot blog spot dot com. Did we type that all in right? I think we did. Let's go ahead and hit enter and see what happens. Huh. Now, for some reason, this thing is kind of acting up on me right now. Um, this it, you got to keep this in mind. This is still in beta form, so uh, let's try that again. Um, the last update that was issued to these uh, computers uh, really seemed to screw them over. Um, let's see, I might need to restart this. Let's actually take a look at the restart speed. It's fairly quick. I'm just going to hold the power button down. It'll log off, just like that, and it'll then turn off. Uh, so we'll just give some time to do that. Alright, let's uh, give it a few seconds. I'll turn off the camera for that. Alright, that, that should be sufficient. Let's go ahead and turn it back on. So I just press the power button and it should turn on. There we go. Working towards booting up. I like their little boot screen. It's literally just chrome. That's nice. Alrighty, now let's try this again. Hopefully this time it'll work. Alright, there we are. Let's try my blog one last time. Like I said, this is still in beta format, so um, that's uh, going. There's going to be a few issues going on. So blogspot.com, pcdac and blog.blogspot.com. Enter. All right. I don't know what's going on here. I don't see why it can't just browse the internet. Come on. Come on. Try a new tab. This don't work. We're gonna try a new window. Yes. Yeah, see, go into settings, new window. No. The friggin' heck is wrong with you? Come on, load it. All right. Let's see. Hold on. Okay, we're going to try this one last time. Oh, wait, it's probably not going to work because it's freaking connected to 3G. Come on! It is still super duper annoying. So let's just go ahead and uh, kind of get a good angle shot of this. Alright, so what do I think um, about the Chrome OS? Well, let me actually tell you what I believe is going to be its future. 
what Google's going to do, they're going to do exactly what they did with the Android, and they are going to uh, make it available to all computer manufacturers um, to uh, use in their notebooks. And these are going to be affordable notebooks. I'm talking within like the 100 to 500 dollar range. These are going to be very, very affordable. Um, and if Google does decide to release um, this model to the public, um, obviously with branding, I mean it might have a nice Chrome logo on the back right there, which you gotta admit would look pretty cool. <laughs> um, but if they do decide to release this particular model uh, to the public, then um, well, you know, it would probably this would probably be the uh, the base model. It would be Google's laptop. It would, I would buy this for easily for $150. So uh, that's my pricing because this would be a good $200 computer but I would buy it uh, I you know I would totally totally buy it for for a hundred dollars so um, I'd say it's gonna be 150 just middle of the range there um, and you know there will be other brands of this uh, computer that you will that you'll be able to buy maybe you know HP or maybe even Dell some people like that will actually be uh, making computers for this I don't know we'll see um, and what would you actually use this for? Well, if it's nice and affordable, and I am talking, you know, if it's like three, if the base, if this one's going to cost three hundred dollars, heck, this is going to fail. All right, this is going to fall on its knees and just burn. Trust me, because three hundred dollars is actually asking a little too much for me, uh, in my opinion. Uh, however, if it is in the hundred dollar range, this computer, um, I would definitely say um, that it would be a useful uh, sort of secondary backup browser type computer. Oh, excuse me. Um, basically, you could use it. Um, maybe have um, your main computer on your left, uh, and that could be uh, you, like a research paper. You're typing up a research paper on that computer, and then you could actually be doing your research on here. Um, and you know that way you wouldn't have to constantly switch between programs like that on the one computer. You could have, you know, literally your web browser on one computer and your work on a separate computer. So. You know, to me, that just makes sense. Um, now, you could just go for a dual monitor system, but why not just buy a whole computer for the same price as a monitor? See where I'm getting at? See where I'm getting at. That's another reason why I think this would be a good $100 computer, because monitor, a good decent monitor, generally costs about $100. So this, that, um, this computer for $100, you're buying a whole computer, and it would be perfect for, like, a secondary thing. Um... In terms of the 3G, this does have 3G in it, as I might have, uh, I don't know if I'm going to edit it out, but I did say, uh, crap, this thing's going to 3G, of course it's not going to work. Um, yeah, the 3G service currently sucks because there's only 100 megabytes per month, so I would highly discourage that you use 3G currently. However, if they're able to do something like with what the Kindles do, or if they're able to give you a nice price unlimited service, and I'm talking like $20 a month, that would, I mean, or maybe even less than that, I mean, you know, I'm talking like yeah, if it's a nice uh, unlimited data plan, um, then it would be a good little way to uh, browse on the go and such. And the, you know, just, yeah, just, I mean, you know, just use it when you need it, turn it off when you don't need it, kind of like on the iPad. Um, so, yeah, anyway, I would definitely say um, that uh, this computer would be worth buying. Now, however, this is, um, you know, you know, how are you going to know if you want something like this? Well, best thing I can say, if you think that this will be actually useful to you, if you think that when you have it in your hands, you will actually use it on at least a weekly basis, um, yes, I would definitely suggest forking over a hundred or something bucks to, uh, buy one of these computers. But if you don't think it's going to be useful to you, um, definitely stay away from it because you probably will not use it if you don't think it's useful. So, buy it if you think you'll use it. Don't buy it if you don't think you'll use it. If you just want it, I mean, you know, if you just want one so bad, I just gotta buy one. <laughs> um, maybe, perhaps, possibly, but I, I seriously would not recommend that you buy one if you really just genuinely don't think you'll use it. Um, and hopefully they'll be able to kick the processing power up on this thing. This thing is not exactly the best at watching YouTube videos and such. Um, however, it does work, but the uh, frame rate is fairly choppy, fairly slow, uh, which kind of sucks. But you know, one if they that that's a uh, all they need to do is just slap in a better processor, which might drive up the price a little bit. But you know, I'm just saying this would be a good baseline model. Um, the way it is spec currently, I think it'd be wor uh, definitely awesome. Um, so yeah. Anyway, I am going to go ahead and leave it at that. It does have a built-in webcam, also something else I forgot to mention, but. 
I can't figure out how to use it. I only managed to use it once, and that was to take a picture of myself for my account. Um, I, I honestly have no idea if that's all it's used for or not. I have tried uploading videos with it uh, through YouTube's uh, quick upload thing. Uh, none of those websites can seem to recognize it as a webcam. I don't know what that's all about, but for some reason they just can't. Uh, but anyway, uh, that's it. Thanks for watching. This was my surprise review. For those of you who are wondering, um, nobody managed to get it. I kind of figured that, which is kind of why I announced it anyway, because, you know, I figured nobody would be able to get it, but still, maybe they maybe they will, though. I mean, you know, I'm saying that for now, but while I'm actually uploading this and what... And you see, what I'm going to do, I'm going to upload this as a private video, and so that way I can actually go ahead and put a thumbnail on it to mask what it is. Um, so, and while that's actually, you know, being applied to it officially, it's going to be set to private mode. And then when it's all said and done, I'm going to put it into pu public mode, uh, essentially releasing it. So by then, somebody could guess Google or the CR48, which is actually what this is, but... Actually, if they if they do guess CR48, I'm not sure I'm going to accept it because I'm not actually reviewing the CR48, but I might, you know, I might consider it, but as of yet, only the only things people have guessed is an iPad 2 and an iPod Touch 4th generation, which I've already re reviewed the iPod Touch 4th generation, so I'm not sure what that was all about. Um, but anyway, uh, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in my next video. Adios.